This is the Logitech G903 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse. That's a mouthful. This particular model came out in mid to late 2017 and is now five years old. I got it just after launch. PowerPlay and G903 launched about the same time. So I got both of those and I have been using them for about five years. And this is my long-term review of the G903 Lightspeed as well as the PowerPlay and I'm going to be comparing it to some of the cheaper available options from Logitech like G102 and whether you should fork out another $100 or $200 to get the wireless charging system or more DPI. Let's start with hardware. The mouse comes in this large footprint ambidextrous design with uh, five buttons pre-installed so your left click your middle click and the right click the forward and back button on the left side as well as your dpi button and a mouse wheel lock to smooth scroll through web pages you can add additional two buttons on the right side by removing this plastic flap and then you can add two more buttons for a total of whopping 11 programmable buttons that's crazy on paper right but in my experience at first, when I got the mouse, I used to go to Logitech Gaming Software or Logitech G-Hub and bother with it, set it all up for a game, and maybe an update messes all of the settings up, and then I didn't go back and set it up. That's just been my experience, and I have also seen among community on Reddit that a lot of people actually have trouble installing or having a stable install of Logitech Software. Most of the people revert back to the Logitech Gaming Software 90265, which is the last stable version to support this mouse but newer mice say like the G Pro Super Lite won't work with that so they are forced to use G Hub but my advice with that is going to be later in the video let's keep talking hardware shall we so switches wise for the left and right click buttons you can hear how they sound these I have modded and I'll tell you a bit more on that later but these come with the Omron D2F-01C which are made in China 50 million clicks but they don't last that long. The other possible issue that I have with this mouse is that the middle mouse button is really hard to press. So if you have grenades or something, you know, fast paced gameplay going on, you might have some delay in pressing that button and you might want to consider remapping it to one of the DPI buttons or maybe something else on the mouse, just something to consider. Design wise, it's very comfortable to hold. It is roughly 110 or 117 grams. I'll have to double check and put it up here. I don't think the weight itself is the issue though. This mouse is designed for medium to large hands. My hands being small to medium size is not very comfortable. Now in normal use, I didn't know I was not very comfortable at aiming accurately with it. But when I switched to the cheaper Logitech G102 Prodigy mouse while I ordered the switch to replace this one. By the way, yeah, all Logitech mice in general, including this one, this is the most expensive they sell. Not anymore though, but at the time it was the most expensive. All the Logitech mice, in my experience, have had the left click or right click fail and start double clicking. And this is not an oversight in quality control, it's just pure lethargy from Logitech because I have not seen a Logitech mouse that doesn't have a failed left click and I use a lot of mice. So what I did is got the Japanese made Omron switches from Omron Japan and installed and sorted them myself to the mouse and it has been working fine after that. These switches cost less than five dollars to install and I don't know why Logitech is doing all of this to save a bunch of money but when your mouse is out of warranty you're kind of forced to replace the switches yourself or get a new mouse entirely. I can ramble on about hardware problems for days with this mouse but let's talk software. You might see a glimmer of hope maybe there but no Logitech has got you covered. You look at the old Logitech gaming software it was a good software, it used to work, it used to start up with Windows, didn't take that many Windows resources from your CPU, memory and GPU. Say hello to Logitech G-Hub, which is complete and absolute utter mess of a software. When it works, it's kind of inconvenient, but when it doesn't work, it kind of messes everything up, resets your profiles whenever it updates. So you have to disable updates if you plan to use that software. And if you set it to auto update, it might get stuck on updating loop forever and you can't uninstall and reinstall it without any special uninstaller like Revo uninstaller. So my advice with Logitech mice in general is first download whatever software you need, program your mouse, save it on board, 
you can have up to three profiles so you can have profiles for three games and set it up on your mouse and then you can switch using the button on the back here to switch between them then uninstall the software but you must be asking what about the battery indicator i don't have power play for that you can actually go to this web page this developer developed a utility that monitors the battery on your mouse and puts it on system tray so it's available at a glance so you don't have to download pesky software to monitor just your battery. Most people I think would agree that you install the software to monitor the battery so you know when to charge the mice. So I wanted to get all the negative stuff out of the way but once you fix the mouse, once you get it all set up, you can actually play games with it which is surprising, right? So I've got Fortnite running here, I'm just playing solos, you know, just hanging out and the aim is pretty good with this mouse. I have the hard mouse pad on on the Logitech PowerPlay and the mouse glides fairly smoothly on top of it. The problem with PowerPlay, which is unrelated to the mouse, is the size of it. It's a bit small if you have low DPI setting. So if you plan to run low DPI, you might want to skip on the PowerPlay because even if you put a third party big mouse mat on it, it will be awkward, you know, like a stepping thing happening going on, which you don't want on your mouse because then you'll be jumping aim when you don't expect to. So who is this mouse for? Well physically speaking someone with large hands, probably a lefty or a righty because the mouse is ambidextrous and someone who plans to own the power play and is used to slightly higher DPI levels like 1200 to 1600. By the way the PMW3366 sensor on this can do 16,000 DPI but that's crazy quick you're probably never going to use that kind of DPI unless you're memeing in Rainbow Six or CSGO just 360 and you're okay with dealing pesky software from Logitech if you don't use any of the macro features blah 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 then you just plug and play and start using the mouse it's okay but if you plan to use any macro keys for Windows multitasking stuff like that you might want to reconsider something like a glorious model D or D minus if you're right-handed and then model O if you're ambidextrous there are also other competitor products like Corsair or HyperX with similar gaming mouse designs to the G Pro Superlight from Logitech which I don't recommend because of the software issues as well as the double clicking issues that I've had with my Logitech mice. Regardless to say I don't recommend buying this mouse for most people but if you're in a situation where you can get this for $50 or something like that then it's a great deal but anything more than that and it becomes not worth it. Anyway guys smash that like button if this video helped you decide which mouse to get or whether you should buy the G903. Consider subscribing and dinging that notification bell just down there and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!